What's going on, guys? It's Derek. We're here at the Green Room. It's September 12th. We have a special guest today. We're going to be topping it up about CBD, talking about the Green Room, how CBD works for this gentleman right here. This is Jonathan Casillas, two-time NFL champion, Super Bowl. I don't know the numbers, but we have Pats and we have New Orleans Saints. Finish your career at the Giants, right? Yeah. Awesome. He's now retired, big CBD user. So we're going to introduce Jonathan. He's going to talk about his life, how he came to being an athlete, and then CBD in his life. So Jonathan, take it up. Well, thanks for having me, number one. Um, appreciate you being here. This is a dope spot. Yeah, man, thank dope you. Dope spot. I mean, I don't really like Hoboken because the parking is probably worse <laughs> than New York, um, but it's a dope spot, great environment. It's visually, it's acoustic. It feels good. Being good, good, good. I you like that. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, so look, I, I, I um, you know, I, I played nine years professional football, undersized linebacker, mm -hmm. you know, like to stick my face in there. You undersized? You know, I was, yeah, believe it or not. Um, but yes, yeah, so I was always banged up, bro. You mm -hmm. know, I always banged up. Um, eventually, I had to retire from just accumulated injuries. And people was like, you know, why did you retire? Just so many different things. And I didn't want my quality of life to be affected moving forward. Mm -hmm. But during the latter part of my career, like year seven, year eight, I got introduced to CBD. Um, mm -hmm. My massage therapist came in and, you know, she would just rub it on my, my body completely during my massages. So I didn't really notice like a significant uh, like like improvement like mm -hmm. i didn't really notice it until i started using it on my own mm -hmm. on just like local bruises that i would have like i had significant wrist injuries mm -hmm. my, my my when my last season one of my last seasons mm -hmm. this is like one of my most important questions i love asking people in your shoes who played sports who recently got introduced to cbd how much of an impact do you think cbd would have you know helped your career let's say 10 years ago while you were playing the NFL all those years, if you had those topical products, you know, obviously, hopefully they were approved. I don't really know what the NFL's legislation is right now with CBD topicals. But let's say you had that your whole time during all that therapy, rehab for different injuries, you know, do you think it would have um, increased your game and made a positive effect? I might have been still playing right now. Mm -hmm. I'm two years removed from the game. I probably put it would have been still playing. That's you awesome, know, man. Cause you, we, 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 <laughs> we both know that CBD is not just a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. It's a constant thing. Yep. Just like any supplement that you use, mm -hmm. you have to get it in your bloodstream and then it takes effect. And then, you know, over time it works just like anything. Mm -hmm. I've had significant relief right away, but just like any drug or stimulant or supplement, it takes getting into your bloodstream and having it consistently. Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, I didn't even know about CBD, you know, let alone the effects that it had, let alone introducing it into my bloodstream, into my body, mm -hmm. into my diet. I had no idea, but I know, cause I do it now and I feel all the ailments of my career as a 33 year old retired linebacker, yeah, yeah. you know, so CBD, is, I try to keep it on a constant in my, in my diet. I would yeah. So say. it's like almost like a never ending recovery that's <clears throat> helping you. Yeah. And I forward. feel it's good. great. And I, and, and when I don't use it, I don't feel so great. Yeah, yeah, you know, you feel so knocks, yeah. I know that if I would have had it early in my career, I could have probably been still playing right now. Mm -hmm. for sure that's awesome so now we have a lot of listeners you know people tune in we get like you know close to a thousand views per video and it's gonna be exciting for everybody seeing that you know you played sports locally you're with the giants you know this is kind of i guess like a giants town people this would say this is giants town this yep. is giants town um now everyone's favorite thing they want to know walk me through your first super bowl uh when you won with the, with uh with the saints you know how it was and uh saints right yeah with the saints so walk me through that experience you know the emotions what's that like well it was it's was 2009 i was mm -hmm. fresh out of college um Injured, coming out of college, mm -hmm. hurt knee, didn't finish my senior year, went undrafted, was a supposedly, uh, you know, highly touted linebacker, projected second to fourth round, I believe, didn't get drafted. So, oh, shit, okay. again, injuries, yeah, yeah, again, yeah. Um, you know, so I kind of started, you know, my career as, you know, a step behind, um, but the chip was there. The chip on my shoulder was there, going undrafted, you know, I was like, no way I'm not making this team. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, cause at the, at that point, you know, kid from Jersey city, you know, I, I was went to high school in New Brunswick, but you know, I ain't have nothing growing up, you mm -hmm. know, and, and that's pretty much a common story between people. And, you know, you're going to get to a point in your life and I'm pretty sure you were there at one point where it's like, you got to do everything you can to take advantage of this once in a lifetime opportunity that mm -hmm. you have. Absolutely. You know, so I, I did that man. And, you know, I attacked it like, like. I mean, like it was that last bone and the, the dog that didn't get any food, you know what I'm saying, is, is, is just tearing everybody apart to get, I attacked it so hard, man, I was so focused. And I had some good guys around me. Mm -hmm. um, of course, Drew Brees was there, mm -hmm. uh, Jonathan Vilma, the late Will Smith, 
uh, Roman Harper, Scott Vegeta. I mean, I can go on and on and on. So many good guys that I had. And I wasn't afraid to be humble. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I went in with humility. Um, and they treated me as such, you know. And I was the young, dumb rookie as Greg Williams, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the defensive coordinator for the mm -hmm. Jets. You know, he used to call me. Um, but, you know, going in humble, going in with that worker's attitude, I ended up playing a lot my rookie year. Um, I think only was inactive the first two games. I was never on practice squad. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that was just, a, you know, a, 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 a tribute to my work ethic, you know. And um, <laughs> the season was long, mm -hmm. you know, and I was coming off a knee injury. So, like, it was really long for me. And, you know, I, I played my best football at the end of my rookie year. Ended up starting a couple of games before the season was over. Played a lot of special teams in the playoffs and in the Super Bowl. I ended up recovering the onside kick in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. But my first time around, I didn't really understand the significance of <laughs> yeah. the game. And yeah, I know yeah, that's yeah. like, what do you mean you won the Super Bowl? <laughs> but like, I, I was young and dumb. Like, I didn't really know. Like, I don't have no pictures with the trophy. The one picture I got with the trophy is with like Reggie Bush and a couple other guys, and it's blurry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the second time around when I won it, if you go back to the game and watch um, when the Patriots beat Seattle, I'm the first person with the trophy. Like, <laughs> there is no blemishes, no no fingerprints yeah, on it. I'm yeah. like this, and I kiss yeah. that thing, and I, I'm walking around with the trophy, and I got a thousand pictures with the trophy. So, you know, first time around, it was super sweet. Mm -hmm. I didn't enjoy it as much as I should have. Second time around, I didn't let it happen twice. That's Definitely awesome. enjoyed it. Well, that describes time. your character. You know, a lot of people that I asked in the area who know you, they were like, yeah, man, reach out. Super humble guy, down to earth. And that makes sense. You know, first time you win it, you don't realize you won it. Right. Second time you win it, it's like, I won it. I got to show everybody I won it. That's awesome, man. So, you know, play for, the, you know, some big teams. Uh, what was it like, you know, going to the Giants and then now off season? you know, what's what's next? What can we expect? Well, playing home in front of the home crowd. You know, my Gi my dad was a big Giants fan mm -hmm. growing up. and. He would move, you know, he was a Saints fan, a big who that guy. <laughs> he was a Buccaneers guy. He was, you know, then he ended up being uh who that I mean, excuse me, then he ended up being Pat's Nation with the Patriots yeah, a little yeah. bit. Um, but when he when I signed with the Giants, I mean everybody, like all my friends were like, Yeah, like we secretly yeah, yeah. trying to cheer for me, <laughs> but they got their Eli Manning jersey on yeah, underneath yeah. their Saints jersey. Yeah, yeah. But my dad, like, he was like, I you know, he came to every game. Every game I had 20 people at every game, mm -hmm. you know. So it was like uh, it was it was definitely I wouldn't say bittersweet I, I wouldn't I wouldn't call that that wasn't the right that's not the right term it was uh it was a gift and a curse yeah because yeah. it was like it's a gift that I get to play in front of all my family members mm -hmm. my daughter was at almost every game mm -hmm. but you know twenty tickets you know you pay for yeah yeah of course. eighteen of those tickets yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying so you know it was it was so good being home uh, I got elected captain my second year mm -hmm. the defensive captain uh, for two years and again being humbled by that. Just realizing, like, you know, you got Jason Pierre-Paul, Olivier Vernon, Janoris Jenkins, Dominique Rodgers Camardi, all of these top Pro Bowl type guys. You know, they voted for me to be their captain and represent them. You know, so that was uh, one of the for me in my career. That was one of the one of the most huge accomplishments, and because you get the recognition from your teammates. You know, and there's really nothing better than your peers to say, "Bro, we love you, bro. We we we, we respect you enough to." to have you as one of our leaders. You know? That's awesome, man. That's really cool. So we know we, you know, we just put some CBD cream on that knee, use our relief cream, you know, mm -hmm. kicks in and heats up nicely. Yeah. I want you to give me some feedback yeah. on that later. Um, but you know, we're going to wrap it up. Um, we do these quick little things because no one's got any attention span these days. <laughs> right. But like I said, we have Jonathan Casillas today. We had, you know, two time Super Bowl winner, captain at the Giants. We have, you know, a dad, you know, much more and we're excited to see what's next and thank you for joining us today at the green room and uh i'm gonna give you a little goodie bag so expect your reviews and uh yeah wrapping it up thank you so much and uh thank you jonathan thank you for having me bro yeah. appreciate it